In this video, we're going to load 8K BASIC instead of 4K BASIC, and we're going to load it using the cassette interface instead of paper tape. Now, 8K BASIC, as the name implies, takes 8K of memory instead of just 4K, but for that extra memory, you get some good features. For example, 8K BASIC now supports string variables, and 8K BASIC also allows longer variable names instead of just two characters like in 4K BASIC. Um, AK Basic also supports the C load and C save commands used to load and save programs from cassette tape. And this was a good way to get programs in and out of the computer more efficiently than with paper tape. Now, the Altair cassette interface was actually a two board set. The primary board was one of their standard serial interface boards that plugged into the bus and was actually the interface to the 8080 processor. And a daughter board on that serial card took the serial data and was an interface to an audio cassette recorder, just a standard home recorder. But as far as the 8080 was concerned, it just saw a serial board. So as you might expect, the process of loading BASIC from one of these cassette tapes is very similar to loading from paper tape since they both come through a serial interface board. Now the cassette runs at 300 baud instead of just 110 like the teletype, so it's about three times as fast, so that was quite an improvement. Alright, so let's go ahead and fire this up and do our hard reset. Again, the procedure is almost identical to loading from paper tape. In fact, 8K BASIC on cassette was the exact same data as 8K BASIC on a paper tape. Alright, so we go to our BASIC manual for 8K BASIC version 4.0 and we find the right bootloader that is required to uh, load from cassette. Now that bootloader dump is available as support material for this video if you want to follow that link. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put that in now. Again, the bootloader will run, um, give the computer just enough smarts to read from the serial port to read a more sophisticated checksum loader from the first part of the tape, and then that checksum loader turns around and reads basic off the rest of the tape. Alright, so let's get going here. It looks like the very first value is a 41. We'll deposit that into location 0 where this starts running, then a 302, and now we'll use deposit next. Alright, the next two bytes are 37 and 61. Twenty-two and zero. Three thirty-three and six. Seventeen and three thirty. 333 and 7, 275 and 310, 55 and 167, 300, 351, 3 and 0. Alright, let's see how we did. Alright, so we should have 41, 302, 41, 302. We should have 37 and 61, 22 and 0, 333 and 6, 17 and 330, 333 and 7, 275, 310, 55, 167, 300, 351, 3, and 0. Okay, that looks good. Alright, so the bootloader is ready to run. Now, as before, we're going to set some of these values to tell BASIC and the loader what type of devices they're talking to. In the version of the loader we're using, these four bits tell BASIC what type of terminal is being connected to, or how the terminal is being connected to. We're using a 2SIO port with one stop bit. The code for that is a 0001. That tells BASIC when it gets running how to talk to our console. All right, the next four bits tell the loader what type of serial port is being used to load BASIC. And we need to tell it it's the cassette recorder. The code for that is 0011, or a 3. 
So these four bits tell the loader what type of serial port to use. These four bits tell BASIC what type of serial port the console is going to be hooked to. Alright, at this point we're ready to send the BASIC tape, so let me get that started. And then as soon as we start that, we can hit the run button here. And as we look at this pattern on the lights, that's similar to what we saw when we were loading the paper tape. That is the boot loader, the boot strap loader running. Now we've seen the light pattern change. That's because the second stage loader has now completed loading and is running. Now if you're caught on paper tape, that took about 25-30 seconds. Here it only took us about 10 seconds to get that um, second stage loader up and running because it's running at 300 baud instead of 110, or about three times as fast. Now, it is running three times as fast, but 8K BASIC is twice as big. So it's still going to take several minutes, about four to five minutes to get this loaded. All right, now, as you might have guessed, um, I don't really have a cassette player, and in, I am once again cheating and using an emulator to send the image of the cassette tape through the exact same serial port that the cassette interface would have used. So the Altair itself cannot tell the difference between this coming in from a cassette recorder or this coming in from the terminal emulator because it is the exact same serial port, exact same baud rate, exact same image of data. Alright, we're going to go ahead and do a video cut and then come back after this four or five minute process is complete. Alright, we're back. The load is completed. We can see by the front panel that we're no longer in the uh, checksum loader. BASIC is now running. And if we take a look over here on our monitor, we see the good old memory size prompt, which is what we always want to see. Uh, we'll hit return and let basic size memory itself. Terminal width, we'll just hit return and accept the defaults. 8K basic, like 4K basic, has a 72 character input line length, period. The terminal width is for output, but the default will be 72. And again, we can save some space by not including some of the trig functions, we'll go ahead and include those. Alright, we're up and running. And just like 4K BASIC, the uh, delete key is going to be your underscore. One, two, three, four. And you see there we get hello. Now one change that is present is that we can put in lowercase on commands and it works. Now, AK Basic simply translates all those to uppercase. Oops. All right, and if you look at that, you'll see that it translated it all to uppercase, except, of course, the string that's in quotes. Even 4K Basic was okay with that. But in general, it's best to work just in uppercase. All right, we run that, and we can see the program works. All right, so you've done all that work, created that super program there, and you want to save it. One thing added in 8K BASIC when you were using the cassette was a command to actually save that, and it's the csave command. Now, csave takes an argument. It's a one-character file name. So, for example, I'll use T as test program. At this point, if I hit return, BASIC doesn't just simply list the program out to paper tape. It saves an image of what's in memory, which is a bit shorter, and when we turn around and load it, it also will load quicker because it doesn't have to process and reconvert the lines because it's already in internal memory format. The only problem is that when you switch to different versions of BASIC, for example, extended BASIC, it used a different internal format in memory, and therefore that tape from 8K BASIC would not load into uh, extended BASIC without converting it back to ASCII like we did for the paper tape. All right, so as soon as I do this and hit return, BASIC is writing that program out at 300 baud to the cassette. And you can see that's done already. That was a very short little program. Now in the case of an emulator, we could simply capture that data and save it to a file. And in fact, I have done some of that with a bigger program. Let's go ahead and clear memory, doing the new. And I'm going to do a CLOAD command. And again, you have to give it a file name. Now what was the point of the file name? Well, that allows you to put multiple files, multiple programs on a single tape, and you didn't have to exactly know where on the tape it was. You could get close, for example, using fast forward or rewind, and then run your C load, and basically would go through looking for this file name to actually start loading it. So it really made finding programs on a tape where you had multiple a little easier. 
All right, so I've got a tape out here with two programs on it. One is Hangman and one is Star Trek. So the code for Hangman I used was, uh, well, let me just delete all this just to make sure I do it right, was H for Hangman. All right, so you'd hit return and then you'd start your tape. So I'm gonna go over here and send the tape from the emulator. And let's see where I put that. It's uh, Right, so here's the actual tape, so I'm going to send that now. So now that tape is going at 300 baud, and BASIC is busy scanning through that tape looking for the file, Hangman, that starts with an H. Once it finds it, then it will actually go through the process of loading Hangman. And again, since this is already stored in memory format, it loads a bit quicker than 300 baud would load a straight text file. Now it's surprisingly efficient. You can actually feed this data to 8K BASIC at 9600 baud, which is of course dramatically faster than 9, uh, 300 baud, and it can keep up without pauses, without delays after each line like we did when we were loading the source file. Again, that's because the program has already been converted into its internal format and is saved in memory that way. Now, I'm not sure how long this is going to take, whether I should sit here and keep talking or uh, do a video cut. This doesn't, if this doesn't finish soon, we'll go ahead and do a video cut. All right, we get the OK prompt back. That means it's completed loading the program. And you can see it loaded the whole thing for us. And the Hangman program will now work. So this is a pretty good setup that we had with the Altair. We could begin using um, CRT terminals, which of course were much faster than a teletype. A lot of them could easily run at 9600 baud. And they were also getting less and less expensive as time went by. And then the cassette tape provided an alternative to having to have the paper tape from the teletype. In fact, it was a bit faster than that as well. All right, well that's it for this video. The computer used in the video today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look and feel, the features, performance of the real Altair 8800, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. This makes it more reliable and affordable than a real vintage 8800, but it also makes it where you don't have to worry about damaging a collector's quality piece of equipment. It's just a great way to experience this exciting part of computing history hands-on. Be sure to visit AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.